the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His grace and His blessing. What do they call your generation now? Do you have a term Z. yet? Are you Z? Yeah. I thought they went to Alpha. We're, uh, we're the middle. They're Alpha. You're what? You're Alpha? We're still Z. 1996. Okay, so 1996. So the interesting thing about this, like when we were growing up, they didn't have terms for your generation. Uh, I think the first one is Generation X, right? X, and then they did Y, and then um, yeah, after the baby boomers. But they started to notice something. It's something called micro generations. That actually a generation is supposed to be a generation, 40 years, 50 years, or 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 larger, right? That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said these things will not pass away until this generation. But now they notice that because of technology, because of uh, how close things are, globalism, that um, generations and differences, large differences between what should be within one generation is taking place. So that's why they're not exactly sure what to do with you. Um, <laughs> they do. It's not your fault. It's the world's pressure on you. And they actually, a lot of the servants, uh, and now you're starting to serve, is that um, the generations are getting smarter and smarter and they mature quicker and quicker for the most part. <laughs> but if they want to <laughs> mature. And I think that's what the focus here is. I want to start by speaking uh, about a, a, a problem on a micro and macro level, which is lying. There was uh, several studies that were published the last few years um, on how often people do not tell the truth. Uh, one study says a, a person on average tells two lies a day. Another similar study said 13 times. Um, and there were some professors that have been trying to figure out exactly why this is the case. They, they said also by most children, by the time they reach the age of four, that 90% have learned the concept of lying. By, by, by the time they can put a good sentence together, <laughs> they've already figured out uh, how to do this. And this, the prevalence of lying has increased at an alarming rate. Um, some people, they did say that they do not lie at all, uh, but they found even when they do surveys, a lot of people end up lying and they admit that they lie <laughs> to the people that, that conduct the surveys. You know, why would someone lie in a survey? And some people with good intentions, they want to give the answer that the person who's doing the survey is looking for, and they kind of respond in, in that sense. Um, so most of the people lie some of the time, and few of the people lie most of the time. But in general, we find out that this is very common. I know some people, they would change their resume depending on who they're applying to, to make it seem like that they are better suited for this organization. We rely on our relationships. Um, they say uh, by the time you meet someone new, within the first uh, 10 minutes, most people lie two to three times because you're trying to, or exaggerations, whatever you want to call it, um, to try to put their best foot forward. Um, and again, when we come to ask and say, why, why do people do this? Um, we lie to people that we care about as well, uh, friends and family, um, so probably not to upset themselves or to try to make ourselves look better, to try to be nice, uh, avoid confrontation. Um, there's a lot of protection here uh, that we do. What's common that you'll find about this? Usually it's about us more than about other people. We lie about ourselves for our own benefit. We lie to other people also, uh, sometimes for self-protection or sometimes to uh, help others and sometimes to hurt others. Um, so these are all the different uh, reasons, but I wanna speak about what's related to this, is that sometimes we lie to our own selves. Technically, when you're deceiving yourself, you're not really conscious about what you're doing, but then you are. Like, that's the whole point of self-deception. You kind of lose the sense of your own reality, but why would someone do that to themselves? You, you are afraid of accepting certain things in reality. So intentionally, you change that reality 
so that you think you can function better. And sometimes it works, but to a certain point. And I want to talk about, um, uh, we'll share with you a few different scenarios when we do that and why we do that. Um, it's as old as Plato. Plato lived a long time ago. Um, but it also comes up in different ways. Uh, this habit of self-delusion, which they call it the worst uh, type of habit that you can have. There's different ways that we lie to ourselves or deceive ourselves uh, to make us uh, at ease that we know what we're doing, we're in control, we understand everything, we are right, we are correct, and every other problems are related to other people. <laughs> and whatever was in the past, I can do better uh, because I really am, you know, great. <laughs> in different ways. For some people, it just looks in external realities, right? Like what we look like <laughs> doesn't really affect. It doesn't really affect. The, there's virtue deception, which is more dangerous, right? Because it's about purity, about wisdom, like I convince myself, yes, I'm very wise, I know what I'm doing, or that I'm very humble, <laughs> right? And, and the, the Lord has anticipated this and given us much advice in regards to this virtue deception. Because if I think I'm holy, right, with the holier-than-thou attitude, what happens? Why do you call someone holier-than-thou? Did they teach you this phrase? Yeah. There, there's something when they say, when someone feels like they are just, you can't really... Thou. I'm, I'm holier than everyone else. And so, you know, you're kind of arrogant. And you treat other people when I think I'm holy, <laughs> right? But when I know that I'm a sinner, right? And I'm just, I'm like everyone else, if not worse, then how do you treat other people, right? Go first, <laughs> right? It's hard for you to accept anything that doesn't belong to you. So that's why even in terms of self-deception, it causes us to act and to live and to react differently to other people. Um, so sometimes we say, well, it's not going to hurt anyone, right? Uh, uh, I'm not going to hurt anyone. Um, but, but actually, um, self-deception in its early forms, like that first picture that you enjoyed, <laughs> it's not, he's not hurting anyone, really, right? But when it develops and gets much worse, then we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us, and we end up to put other people in danger or hurt other people in different ways and not realize it. That's why I, I want to, I think this, this part is uh, very important for us to understand who we are. Some people call this the uncensored chapters in our lives that we want to kind of cover up. Now in college, I will admit, like, you're, it's a little early for some of this self-deception, but it starts to be very, um, tempting <laughs> in uh, this time in your life and give it another 10 and 15 years, it's just like blood sugar. If you have <laughs> controlled it very well at a young age, so you, you, have the, you have formed the good habits, right? But if you're uh, in, in normal Egyptian households <laughs> with certain eating habits, okay, at a certain age, you're going to have to change your lifestyle a little bit.